clarification. Here again is a sagittal view of the human, and we can see the two pathways, one for air and one for food. So the trachea is accessed via the larynx, which you can see labeled here. There's the glottis, that little opening where the vocal folds and vocal cords are. And there is our epiglottis again, that blue piece of tissue that they have drawn here sticking up. So we enter the larynx through that glottis and go down the trachea to the lungs. Or if we're swallowing food or saliva, we go down this pink pathway in the back and enter the esophagus and go down through the diaphragm and into the stomach. And we're going to talk about the trachea in another video as it goes to the lungs. So we'll see here from the side, you can see this entire structure, this entire structure from the top where you see this bit of tissue uh, here to the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage, this is a ligament. So you'll see from the hyoid down to this enlarged portion where it ends at the cricoid, all of that is considered to be the larynx. And the vocal cords are behind this piece of uh, cartilage called the thyroid cartilage. And that enters into those C-rings called the trachea, and then that goes down to the lungs. All right, so now we've got look at this respiratory system portion of our list, the thymus, larynx, thyroid gland, epiglottis, diaphragm, lungs, and trachea. We'll come back to the esophagus when we move down to the diaphragm and look at the stomach down to the intestine. So let's do the respiratory system. So here we would be at the base of the mandible. So if you're thinking about the base of the mandible here, or the jaw, right below that is the highway bone. I'm not going to draw that because it'll interfere with what I'm trying to show you. So right here is going to be that box that we mentioned earlier. This is the larynx. The larynx. And the larynx contains the vocal cords, or as you'll learn later, the vocal folds, but that's later. So for right now, we're just gonna call them vocal folds and you'll learn vestibular folds uh, later, but vocal folds as vocal cords. The vocal cords, you'll learn true and false later, but for now, good enough. So the larynx is going to become the trachea. And the trachea has these cartilaginous rings that keep it open. They support it at all times. It's not muscle. So I'm going to go on down here, and then it starts to bifurcate. And I'm missing one here. But it's going to go. Uh, into the lungs, as you already have figured out. And so on and so on. And so this is the trachea. To either side of the trachea, above what you will see the dissection really would be here. So you'll be able to see this portion here before you get into the thoracic cavity. So that these would be sort of the shoulders. At this level, at this level there are two glands, one to either side. of the trachea. And this is the thymus. Okay, so this is the thymus and so is this. I 
heard it described as looks like wadded up chewing gum. I don't know if that's an apt description, but in any event, it are it is the two uh, glands you'll see to either side of the trachea. And then at the base of the trachea, before it moves into the thoracic cavity, so I'm going to hide that area here. You're going to see this. And it's brown. I'm going to go ahead and color it red so that we know that it's different from the thymus. This is the thyroid gland. So this is the location of the thyroid gland on a fetal peri. So that red thing, it's not red in real life, it's brown. But in the fetal pig, the thymus gland is to either side of the trachea and the thyroid gland is at the base of the trachea right as we get ready to go into the thoracic cavity. Also where I've drawn the mandible here, if you can recall, there is that flap of cartilage sticking up that blocks the entrance to the larynx when we swallow. And that flap of cartilage is again the epiglottis, there to protect us from aspirating our food into this airway. So we don't wanna aspirate food into the larynx. And remember the epiglottis closes like a trash can lid over the top of the larynx when we swallow food. So we could think about, I'll use this bracelet as an example, if this is the beginning this is the larynx and my hand is the epiglottis, it would close over the top like that and block the food from going in. It's much smaller than that, but you'll see it in the fetal pit. Okay, so that's the relationship.